friends, I join you on another dark and stormy morning here. I kind of like those conditions for shooting videos. I don't know, it feels very cozy. But I'm going to be sharing my favorites and some duds in this video. I've got a few things that didn't quite hit the mark with me. There have been some really fun products lately. I try with these favorites videos to not get too redundant. Like if I've just done a video talking about the best glowy face palettes, like I'm not going to really dive in and re-mention all of those, you know. But just generally speaking, some things I've been loving. I've had several rediscoveries things that I'm so enthusiastic about and some new things too. So thank you for joining me. Let's dig in. First things, um, I have had a couple of loves from this new NARS Orgasm collection. Um, they've got, of course, the blush that's very well known. I do like that blush. But a couple of the things that really struck me are the lip oil and also the liquid highlighter, which really comes off like a blush to me. I wear this directly over top of whatever blush I'm wearing. And it's just a pretty additional effect. Um, sometimes it does make me feel like I could skip the highlighter, but I'm not surprised that I love this because I really like the NARS liquid blushes as well. I think you just got to know how to use them to feel comfortable, right? So you twist this open and you can see the little dropper has now come up and this is the style. So it's super duper liquidy. I will just put some out on my hand and very ready. Ah, gotcha. But do you see the depth of this product? Do you see why that would kind of prefer form like a blush perhaps. So I'll get some on my hand, usually way less than that, like a fraction of that amount. And then I take a little synthetic brush, like maybe this little guy from um, Sephora, anything that's near blush brush size, dab into that and then like swirl it basically right on top of my blush. Or sometimes just wear that alone as my blush and it's beautiful. It's got a really nice glow. It's not too like metallic. It's not too super frosty, but it always leaves this really pretty tone and also like finish and texture on the skin, right? Looks very smooth, very natural. So I have been loving that. And also this lip product. This is way more pinky than I was kind of expecting it would be. These are products I got sent in PR and I remembered seeing them beforehand and thinking, you know, what's that all about? But it's called an oil infused lip tint. And the texture on this is so good. Like you might be a little thrown by the term oil thinking, well, is this like going to be really runny? Is it going to be the consistency of a facial oil. It's much more of a gel type feel and I want to show you color wise what it gives off here on my hand. See it's going to be like sheer pink. So I've got that on my lips and I have been wearing this so so much if I want a really shiny look. You know I've had very dry lips lately and this feels so good to put on because I feel like I've kind of glammed up my look with the shine and everything but yet it's super comfortable really really smooth. I'm not sure whether one of the claims on this is that it's like a self adjusting type deal but I feel like I get the prettiest pink flush on my lips when I'm wearing it and I will sometimes pair it with this lip liner. This is from Essence and it's the soft contouring lip liner in Big Proposal. So I do have this on my lips, not really even all over, just kind of defining the line and then it meshes so well with this. And you can look closely at this and see kind of like some golden shimmer, sort of that light pink at a glance, but a little bit deeper rosy pink when you really get to checking it out. So I just, I have loved these products from NARS. Now I have another thing that didn't go over quite so well with me that you will see in the duds portion from that collection. I know I said I wasn't going to really get into all the glowy palettes and everything because I've talked them to death already, but I must mention this as a favorite because this Beauty Bakery palette is like, um, if I could preemptively like give it an Emily Award now, I would. The blush quality in here is so great. They call them blush lighters. It's a very beautiful glowy blush palette. Today I'm wearing this one. So I've got this on, that blush, and then I've got a little bit of the NARS over top and you might think well gosh isn't that a lot of glow but doesn't it look healthy doesn't it just look fresh I love every tone in here if I could give you like one top thing to go get from Ulta get this and again the brand is Beauty Bakery um, I hadn't really tried too much from this lineup when I got this I also got the flower loose powder which I do like that too but this has just totally stolen my heart when you get it it's packaged so cute it's got like little um, cotton balls sitting like just gently adhered right 
right on top of your palette and it comes within a pretty box so wouldn't that be a fun like little graduation gift or what other fun festive occasions like a Mother's Day gift or a baby shower you know the pregnant lady can't literally have champagne but she could have this I just want you to know it comes with a really pretty kind of special presentation and the glow is so fun I have been tweeted several times over for people saying I got that I love it I don't know where I was before I got this so it's just it's tremendous I've got a few rediscovered loves in my collection one of them is this little powder from Besame um, this is a small size so if you get a, one of their loose powders it won't come looking like this it's a bigger size but it's their translucent brightening violet powder I'm not sure in recent weeks what made me reach this out again but I just kind of had it there in my drawer and I'm like I want to use something different and it is a very very light lilac shade. I mean, we're talking subtle with that hue. It's not going to show up like purple on your under eyes, but I've got it on today just lightly setting my concealer, and I love the brightness. I love the non-cakey factor, but like you put this on on top of concealer, you really do see a brightened difference, and not brightened by way of any shimmer. This is not a sparkly powder. This is just a loose setting powder with a slight tint, and they have like a rose one. They've got a yellowy one. I don't think these are still sold on Sephora's website. I'm not sure. Maybe Amazon or Besame's website. I will link to it below where I can find it. But it's really, really cool, and I think lighter, fair skin tones could really get into this shade. And it's not just the tone, but it is a nice textured powder that doesn't make me look like dry on the under eye after a few hours of wear or something. Next, I've got two things from Mally that I have rediscovered and I'm loving. Um, Mally, I'm not finding anymore on Ulta's website, but they're very much you know, a QVC brand, and you can find them at Kohl's, but this Muted Muse palette, I remember talking about this in a favorites video, like, probably years ago, and I love this palette. This shade, Fancy in particular, like the taupey plumminess in there is so nice, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. First off, really nice textures, very easy to blend and work with. I've got it on my eyes today. I've got some of that fancy shade on my lid. I've got a little bit of euphoria and insight here blended on the outside, and they give you this really neat little warm punch in here, which you typically wouldn't see with this color scheme, right? But you've got this nice little kind of of orangey glow. Not super orange, but just like a peachiness that you can blend up above your look or all over the lid, however you want to use it. But another couple of big factors that make this so special are this highlight and contour here, which are really, I mean, when I first got this, I thought, oh, they've just given us a couple of big eyeshadow shades. And it is 100% marketed as an eyeshadow palette. But I think it might have been in an actual QVC presentation where Mally dug in and is like, and this is a great contour shade, and it totally is. And this highlight Highlight, this soft pearlescent highlight by the time that shears out on the skin so softly pearly not metallic just gentle it looks so pretty around the inner corner I mean this could be your quick look these two shades like that on the lid that in the crease done but I love all these other shades again the warm pop if you look vertically you can kind of see like here's your brownish kind of neutral look here's your plummy look with what I did today I kind of mixed them all together and I just I, I love this palette I really do. It's a great little basic, easy, small, lightweight thing. And then the other rediscovery I had from Mally was this Evercolor Gel Waterproof Liner. I have it in the shade Graphite. It seems to be a total black to me. Judging by the little mark here, maybe it's just a near black, but I am so remembering how much I love these Evercolor liners. They used to be packaged in green, but now they're black all over. It's a retractable liner, and this wears like none other. The other day when I was wearing this, I took a shower, and I will take my makeup off in the shower with, you know, one of those Equate wipes or whatever, and I'm not looking in a mirror, but I'm, I am know I'm getting pretty much everything off. And then I get out of the shower, look in the mirror, and I can see that I've still got eyeliner all up in my lower waterline and under the eye, which was where I was wearing this. And I was like, dang, this withstood an entire day plus a shower. Just really creamy, really has that great ability to stay in the waterline, but goes across skin just with total ease. And I can't remember exactly when I got this one, but I was looking it up on QVC and they do have like a five piece set. But this is just really hardcore. If you can't get satisfied with a liner in your lower inner rim, or even just to wear generally speaking across the upper lash line, this keeps its intensity. It does not fade. 
made. It stays where you put it. It is just an amazing liner pencil. Foundation wise, I feel like I've been bouncing around quite a bit. There's been a lot I've been trying, a lot I've been really enjoying actually. Um, but I thought I would just give a little mention to a couple of the things that have been, I think maybe the biggest hits for me lately. Still got my It Cosmetics Confidence in a foundation that's like in progress in testing. I was wearing this in the lip try on video and I did think it looked fantastic and it wore pretty well that whole day. Still messing with that. But the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage, I have this in Sand Beige and this has really impressed me. I'm wearing this today. It's super thin, like ultra liquidy, comes out of this dropper, you know, it's just got a really lightweight feel as you blend it in, but it's going to look matte and it covers super well. I would venture to say this is nearly full coverage. It says mattifying, second skin effect, lasts up to 24 hours. I haven't literally tested it for 24 hours, but it most definitely gets me through the day. I really, really like that. I think that would be a great option for somebody who really likes the matte look. And then I also, this is a rediscovery. I've had this in my collection for what seems like a few months and something about the timing when I got it. I was also trying something else and it kind of got pushed to the back, but this is Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Liquid Foundation in Cashmere. And this is beautiful on my skin. Don't know that I'd call this a 100% full coverage foundation, but I would say it's close. It has SPF 20 in it. It looks so even yet so natural on my skin. I've got to show it sometime in a video going on. I think I'm going to do kind of a refreshed bare minerals look, you know, with some different products. Like not all that long ago, I did the traditional powder foundation, but I think pulling in like some of the new highlighters and bronzers and stuff like this, you know, that you don't necessarily immediately associate with bare minerals. Like, oh, they've got a great liquid foundation. They really do. I love this. Now, they have another thing that I haven't tried, and I think that's the Bare Serum or something like that. This is the actual liquid foundation, and I am super, super impressed with that. Now, I've got three kind of misses for me. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're the worst products in the world. They're definitely not. But for my preferences, just the way I like to use products, they're not really jiving with me. And one is this palette that came out with that new NARS collection that I mentioned, the lip color and the liquid highlight blush thing is from. They also put out this and I was excited to see this. It's a cream palette here and you've got multiple tones. Everything's got shimmer and I feel like I'm just struggling to love this or even really like it. Something about the textures of these creams, like by the time I smooth them out on the skin, like let's say I want to wear this shade or this shade like a blush, they look thicker. They look more clinging to the surface of my skin, clinging to the texture in my skin. Whereas this kind of just glazes over everything and, and you get that beautiful shimmer, but it's not exaggerating any texture, and I feel like this really is. This is something they claim could be an eye, lip, or cheek. I also don't like these on the lips because they're just not quite creamy enough. Like, by the time you blend one out on the lips, it's just looking kind of dry, and I need more moisture right now. And then for eyes, I mean, these are creamy products that don't really have a big dry down situation. They just stay creamy. So in a practical sense, it's not the kind of stuff that's going to get me through a whole day without creasing on the eyes. So I'm struggling to find just a really good place for these products in my stash. I feel like the most probable thing for me would be that I would wear them on the skin, but like this is a pretty highlighter type shade, but something about the cream texture and the little bit of thickness that it has, and by the time I get that on my skin, it's just really looking makeup-y. And sitting over here, they got this product that's sneaky as heck and goes on, you know, is it a blush? Is it a highlight? Gosh, I'm not sure. I just look completely radiant. I just am much preferring this liquid texture compared to the cream creams in here. Kind of on that same level, here's another thing I wasn't digging. I mean, it's it's Maleficent, okay? Maleficent did some shady stuff to Aurora, and I'm not holding this against her personally, but this highlight, this is a super shock highlight from ColourPop, so it is going to feel differently from, like, one of their standard powders, right? It's got that creamy element, which I have kind of enjoyed in some of their products. There is an embedded, I would say, super fine sparkle in here, and you see it on my finger. Like, I'll lift it up like this, and we can all ooh and awe over how pretty that is. But it is very metallic. This, just to swipe it over the surface of my hand, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty, but I can see every single line, pore, anything on my hand. And the same goes for tiny lines, surface of the skin on my cheeks. To me, this is like a flaw spotlighter. And it's something about, again, the creaminess of the texture, I think really like gets in there somehow. And it looks thicker 
on the skin than just a light buffed in highlight would. Again, it's the kind of thing that will look beautifully intense and impressive in a swatch, but we've got to think practically speaking, how does this actually look with wear? And like this can't hold a candle to how beautiful the powder highlight from ColourPop is that I put in my customized palette, you know? If you haven't watched that video, check it out. It's a great palette that I put together. But I love my powder highlight in there. It's beautiful, it's glowing, but it's a completely different story compared to this. So Maleficent, I'm sorry, I just, I can't get into this. As much as I wanna love the mistress of all evil, it's just not gonna work. And here's Aurora right here. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Last thing that I got in a Sephora order somewhere in the past couple of months is this incredible is the brand rollerball gloss I saw that this was available and I thought oh my gosh roll on lip gloss throwback to my youth you know I felt like I was using a lot of these kinds of things remember NYC had the roller lip glosses and they were so good even lip smacker to this day I think has a rollerball I think I still have it it's the watermelon scent um, but this is called rolling like a honey and it is so Thin. Like you can tell the way that's gliding around here, the bubble you can see in the container, this is very thin. It is super oily. You feel like you're just taking olive oil and just rubbing it around on your lips, which may be a good temporary moisturizing experience, but I don't like that greasy feel. There are plenty of products that can moisturize and not give you a greasy feel. Seriously, the Lip Smacker one has more like gel infused into it, more of a cling to the lips. This, you put it on and you're like, yeah, rollerballs are fun. And then it leaves you with this like, wait, but I'm so greasy. They need to thicken this up just a little bit. I'm not saying make it sticky. It wouldn't be uncomfortable, but just a little more thickness in there um, so we can all enjoy the rollerball idea again. Because I'm proud that somebody's putting out a rollerball, but let's just, let's tweak the formula slightly. I'm gonna end this video on a nice fired up note. Thank you so much for watching. As always, everyone, I appreciate your thoughtful comments, your love and support. It's so wonderful. Let me know your video requests in the comments section. Always love to hear that and have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye.